G'day, glad you could join us for our seaplane adventure around Australia. I've always wanted to fly around Australia's coastline and it has been on my bucket list for 30 years now. Next step, need some company, so I post a few messages and before I knew it, the group has become five seaplanes. I think we all, at some time in our life, want to give something back to the community, so I decided to ask the Make-A-Wish Foundation if we could make some wishes come true as we travel this great country. This ended up being the most rewarding part of our adventure, taking up disadvantaged kids. So make sure your seat is in the upright position, your tray table is stored and hang on for this exciting adventure. First up, we add the sponsor's logos. Plane's now looking great. Now we just need to sort out Marty's luggage. Okay. Hold on a minute. See so you've repacked my bloody backpack, David. I'm not happy. <laughs> I don't know who's more excited, Nikisha or myself, our first Make-A-Wish flight. Yahoo. There we go. Oh, that's awesome. We can sort of just, you know, keep on cruising around at this speed and don't forget to give them a big wave. Yeah. Oh my god, the plan looks amazing. <laughs> Good pilot, eh? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, he's one that trusting me all the way around Australia. <laughs> yeah. so. mm. He's telling her that it was the first, first make a wish flight. Fantastic, yeah, yeah. You're, you're the first, the lucky one. Yeah. I'll never forget it. I might mm. forget a name, no. but I'm not going to forget yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. We get crashed a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty awesome. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So did you go down onto the water? Like, yeah, we, yeah, we did three touch and goes. Yep. And like, Gate crash over there, they've got this wedding on the beach down there, so we've come right down beside them and just. <laughs> Soon Adam comes for a fly with me as well. A spectacular day for our first make a wish flights. Spectacular is a word I get to use quite a lot on this trip. Ever said to me. <laughs> well, 
welcome to Caboolture. Doug arrives from Meriburra, which is just north of Brisbane, and our flight of two seaplanes are now underway. Yeah. I see you got the cape to take a photo yeah. of it. Yes, we. Yeah. And he's got his life jacket on too. Yeah. Good to see he's all fitted out. They gave me a fitting. We're all good to go except for some weather. So we're just going to hang around for a while and wait for these showers to pass over. How's the flight plan, plan looking, David? Yeah, the flight plan's looking good. We've got us leaving Caboolture here and we'll fly out to Tangaluma, uh, around uh, Dunwich, in, uh, North Stradbroke Island, down South Stradbroke Island, and then we'll uh, go past Q1, past uh, the Gold Coast, and then uh, down to Evan, all I like to go to um, Byron Bay, most eastern point, and then down to Evans Head. Right down the bottom there is our destination for today. The only problem we've got at the moment is that uh, we've got a little bit of weather coming up. So I've got down the bottom there, there's this bit of thunderstorm and storm activity, but it seems to be passing through so we're just delaying our departure for about uh, two hours and we'll be on our way. We haven't got a long leg today so that makes it quite easy. Waiting on a storm cell to pass through before takeoff from Caboolture, we noticed Doug's tail wheel bracket is bent. This is going to be the first and only repair of the entire trip. That's very optimistic mate. You wouldn't think that little bend would make that much difference, but it obviously does. A quick family shot and a kiss goodbye and we're off. After letting those showers pass, we've got nothing but clear skies ahead of us. What could go wrong? Our first miscalculation, the weather hasn't cleared around the Gold Coast just yet. And you'd think a seaplane would be waterproof. down here because this is a really pretty part of the country to fly on a, a nice day. Yeah, well you haven't taken me down this way before. Ah, oh, that's right, yeah. One of my favourite flight paths is going over the Gold Coast. Unfortunately, it is not all smiles today. We soon pass the Gold Coast and the weather clears. We continue tracking coastal to our first destination. Landing at Evans Head, we need to watch out for the kangaroos on the edge of the strip. Watch that one over on our right hand side there. Delta Runway landing, okay. Lovely Evans Head. How was your flight? It was good. In, yeah. in company, following you guys. So the old Evans Head, she's a bit of an old military place with cross runways everywhere. They only looks like they only maintain one one runway these days. But... Every landing is a good one. Yep. The day one's particularly that good. It was a good one, a crosswind landing. Yep. Mine was a bit average. It's alright, we didn't see it. <laughs> oh, that's, that's good. <laughs> I thought, what was that again? Yours was excellent. Oh, yeah, it was perfect. <laughs> perfect Day one comes to an end at the beautiful Evans Head. Oh, here we are, morning number one and a half, I guess, if you count yesterday. Yeah, early start. All in two. Yeah. Now what's this, what's this fantastic establishment we're staying at? This is the Evans Head Burn Breakfast. And it's a fantastic place. Number 20 Sunderland Road. What a beautiful place. Nice aspect looking over the river to the west. 
nice people. Before we leave, we drop into the Evans Head Aviation Museum, where they've acquired a retired F-111. The F-111s flew from 1973 to 2010. After their retirement, a few were donated to aviation museums. Unfortunately, the rest of them were buried. There are now plans to turn Evans Head into an air park, so the next time we come here, I'm sure it'll look completely different. Hey Marty, watch out for the control stick. The nude bathers are on this side. Stasio, you're talking and you can't hear me. I may have isolated you, so if I push this button up like that... Then it needs to go down. Really handy when you're leaning out the plane, because you're getting the wind noise in the thing. Okay, yeah, I'll, do, I'll let you do that, isolate myself. Yeah. If you're going to be leaning out of the plane, any period of time. Marty. It's at this point I should have told Marty to also hang on to his hat. Landing at Smith's Lake, we have teed up some accommodation with Keith Clark, who is the president of the Seaplane Pilots Association. We better behave ourselves here. Taxiing up to Keith Clark's place, a fish decides to jump into the boat, or should I say, plane, scaring the daylights out of Marty. And the view from Keith Clark's place is just spectacular. There's that word again. Breakfast time attracts the local kookaburra population, obviously eaten at Keith's before. This one seems very happy to pose for the cameras. A quick review of yesterday's footage shows the departure of Marty's hat. <laughs> Actually, Dave, I reckon your expression is going. <laughs> Oil's done, engine's cranked. After the pre flight checks are done, we show off the amphibious abilities of these fantastic aircraft. After departing Smith's Lakes, we are almost immediately into the controlled airspace of Newcastle. When flying around, we have two frequencies. We have a chat frequency and also the frequencies that we talk to the control tower. It is important that you're on the right frequency when you're wanting to make fun of your fellow pilots. Castle, clearance limited 
Manor Bay, cleared coastal southbound from Manor Bay, cleared at 500 feet. X-ray Whiskey Whiskey, cleared Anna Bay, 500 feet, coastal X-ray Whiskey Whiskey, and company. Bad boy, bad boy, this is Best Boy, we've just had instructions to send to 500 feet. Wrong frequency. Uh. There's a hat, we got something <laughs> new on him. <laughs> Our next destination is Rathmines, the home of the Catalina. Or, well, it was the home of the Catalina in World War II. I class this as the best seaplane ramp in Australia. It is really wide and it's got a nice gentle slope. Staying at Malcolm Burns's place close to Rathmines, we discover Marty has a few more extra talents that we didn't know about. Malcolm's very keen to show off his pumper bike, which uh, Doug and Marty are very keen to try. God, that looks so easy. I've got to have a go at that. Pretty <laughs> <laughs> Right. That's a fail. That's, I think that's probably one of the best first I think, goes I've I seen. think I needed more push on. <laughs> Carl? No, it's not too bad. Not too bad. But uh, it's definitely in the in the push off. Take two. Marty's turn. Push up nice and fast. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dougie, I take my hat off to you now. I was convinced that would be easy. So horizontally, the ship's getting more horizontally fast. Oh, well. A little better than the first time. That's, that's good. Yeah, I reckon about another month of this. <laughs> the third member of our group, Andrew Wilson, has joined us from Lord Howe. Andrew has a beautiful seaplane, a Freedom Collier. With its long wingspan, it is a cross between a glider and a seaplane. It is a great touring aircraft with its long range fuel tanks and autopilot. It is a superb aircraft. With Andrew and Doug in company, we fly down the beautiful New South Wales coastline and into Sydney Harbour. Sydney Harbour is restricted airspace. It's 
called Romeo 405 and is only open to seaplanes and helicopters. It's always a special moment flying over Sydney Harbour Bridge at 500 feet. Landing at Cabarita was our next destination for our Make-A-Wish flight. Unfortunately, our passenger was too sick to fly that day. However, we couldn't resist having a picnic anyway. Ahoy there! A short 10 minute flight finds us at Bankstown, just so we can pick up some spare parts for Doug's plane. You can see I'm not editing the footage, here's one of my not so good landings. All three of them. Bankstown Airport is a private and commercial airport located in Sydney, catering for training and commercial services. It is also the restoration place of Australia's second Catalina. We couldn't resist getting our photos taken in front of the Grumman Goose. See if you can spot the Goose. What do you reckon, Doug? I reckon this is pretty good. Our final destination today is Weatherburn, where we catch up with Colin and Errol Pillamer, who are flying in a Lake Buccaneer, a four-seat amphibian aircraft. Like we're doing six months now. Got no power off. Look at we go. They're dropping like a. A lead balloon. Select landing. Oh, that's annoying when that does it. Runway landing. Okay. On the next episode we continue with our Make-A-Wish flights and track south along the Australian coastline. The whiskey has landed. Nice job. Thank you so much, that was awesome. Yeah, it's pretty cool, eh? Yeah. The weather turns nasty along the way and overnight we sink one of the aircraft. After some drying out, we continue heading towards Tasmania and then up to King Island and on to Melbourne, where we pick up Vaughan, who flies the Super Petrol, who will be the fifth aircraft to join our adventure. Looking forward to catching up soon.